or something else, see if it gives you a bit of hope. And it's the issue of fracking, which has yeah. really been a big deal in this country. I'm going to embarrass someone uh, in the audience now because, you know, many MPs got away with uh, leeching off expenses and they weren't prosecuted. But uh, another MP was, uh, there was an attempt to prosecute them for standing up for their principles. And that, of course, was Caroline Lucas, the Green MP, uh, who... who Um, who, who, uh, who, whose attempt to, of course, prosecute, uh, prosecute her collapsed, which was a fantastic victory. Yeah. Uh, but the anti-fracking movement, I mean, that, it's, it's an encouraging sign, isn't it? It's grabbed the headlines, yeah. it's provoked a public debate, it's, it's helping to put wider issues back on the agenda. Do you see in this country and elsewhere that movement, is it something we can, we can build on and, and expand? Is it, is it, does it show the tide is shifting a bit more in our direction? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think it does. And, I, and this, you know, this issue that our, you know, we, we, we have an elite that is, is refusing to say no uh, to this rogue sector, that, that it's, it is really a, an economic model that has declared war on life on Earth. I mean, this is what it means to have five times more carbon in your reserves than the atmosphere can absorb and still leave us a 50-50 chance of keeping temperatures below two degrees warming. This is the great work that the carbon tracker has done, and I'm, you know, all of you have heard this sort of the, the carbon bubble argument. Mm -hmm. But when I first read that research, um, you know, this is the research that, showed, that, 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 that sort of appealed to investors and said, we've got a problem. We have a carbon bubble, right? We have these companies that have these, these, these assets in reserve that are five times more than our governments have said they are, they're, they're willing to allow into the atmosphere. But when I read that research, I thought, oh, no, this is not a carbon bubble. We're the bubble, <laughs> you know? I mean, these companies have made a calculation that our governments actually didn't mean it when they made that that commitment in Copenhagen that's entirely voluntary and non-binding. Um, and so we have to stop them, you know? And this is what's been happening in communities around the world where as they say no to this extreme energy frenzy uh, that's going on. Um, and the fracking, the global uh, anti-fracking movement um, has been just, in, it's been incredible how quickly it's spread. This, but this is the flip side of the carbon boom, right? The fossil fuel industry is much more ambitious than it used to be, and it's also going after more privileged people than it used to. Fossil fuels have, has always required sacrifice zones. It's just that the sacrifice zones used to be better hidden, and it used to target mostly working class people in North America. It's mostly um, you know, communities of color that have the refineries in their backyards, um, that, have, you know, that, that have drilling in their backyards that are downstream from coal mines. Um, and they have been responding to this and getting ignored <laughs> for a very long time. Now we find ourselves in the midst of this extreme energy boom, and it's affecting way more of us, and it's, it's affecting way more historically privileged people, which is an opportunity to build alliances um, and, to, and, you know, and to build a movement off of that infrastructure. The the thing about fracking is that it's, you know, what I was saying before about fossil fuels, right, is that it is, it's, it's usually concentrated in relatively small geographic locations where the extraction takes place and then you have the infrastructure of refining and transportation. Fracking is different because it, it, you know, it's a lot of really small holes covering a huge amount of territory, right? Half of England is, you know, it, it is being eyed for fracking. That is a huge amount of territory. Same things with tar sands, too. I mean, the area that they want to mine for tar sands is an area the size of Florida or the size of England. Um, so it's almost like we're, you know, we're, it's this, this economic model, you know, I call it, it's extractivism. It's a way of seeing the world that says that you can take and take and never give back. Um, this is a mindset, it's a worldview, it's not, you know, it goes deeper even than capitalism. It's at the heart of the entire industrial project. Um, it's always required sacrifice zones, but what's happening now is that in this late stage, um, we're all in the sacrifice zone now, right? Um, and so, yeah, I think the, the movement against fracking has been heroic, um, and it is, you know, we are, we are starting to see this, this, the kind of resistance where people have those stakes that you're talking about, right? I mean, people get involved in fighting fracking not because of climate change, but because they're worried about their water. Um, and, you know, water is actually what 
unites so many of these movements, whether it's against tar sands pipelines or fracking um, you know, and coal mining. Um, it's, it's, it's water and it's love of place. And then layered on top of that is understanding that not only are you protecting your, your place, but you're protecting the planet as a whole. And the French anti-fracking movement have this great slogan, ni, ni ici ni ailleurs, which is not here nor anywhere, right? Not here or anywhere, which is sort of, it's not NIMBYism, it's not just not in my backyard, it's not in anybody's backyard. It's drawing a line and asserting a principle, right? And the principle is no new carbon frontiers when you're in a, a hole, stop digging. And we call this the Keystone Principle because we've been fighting the Keystone XL pipeline. Um, uh, it, which is carrying tar sands fuel across North America, or would, if they manage to get the whole thing constructed. Um, and a, a colleague of mine at 350.org, um, uh, Casey Golden, who I quote in the book, he says, you know, Keystone is not, it's not just a pipeline, it's a principle. Um, and the principle is we cannot lock ourselves into more more fossil fuel infrastructure. We, the, the infrastructure that we need to be building is the infrastructure for the next economy. Fantastic. Right, what I'm going to do now, before... Um...